friend. Thank you so much for listening to the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. I'm your host, Mike McCurry. I greatly appreciate the fact that you are taking a portion of your day and spending it right here with me. I say right here because I'm coming to you from an interesting setting. Normally, I record these broadcasts from the brand new Paul Levine Studios in our brand new building in Odell, Illinois. But today, just a little bit different. I'm actually coming to you from a deck, an outside deck. I'm coming to you from my parents' back porch, if you can believe it. I've had the opportunity these past few days to spend some time with my family and took my wife, Rebecca, and my two girls, Emmy and Lucy, and we are in Kansas at this precise moment as I'm talking to you. I want to thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you for just a few moments from this idyllic, this interesting setting. I had to ask my dad to turn the fountain right behind the microphone, behind the camera, if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. We have a fountain back there. Beautiful. It looks very nice. Sounds awesome. Kind of messes up the recording just a little bit, but I'm glad that you're here with me. I'm glad the weather is good enough that I can do this outside. It's a beautiful, almost summer day. Appreciate your listenership. I'm going to ask you if you would to grab your Bibles. Turn in your Bibles to the book of John. Chapter 20 is where we will find our place today have a thought that really just kind of captivated me over these past few days and just want to share it with you if you'll allow me to. The book of John, and we'll find our place in chapter 20. While you do that, let me tell you about a special gospel tract. You know, all of the 45 or 50 gospel tracts that we print, produce, and distribute from Bible Tracts Incorporated, we print them for free, we ship them for free, distribute them to over 170 countries. We've done so for over 80 years for free. But we have certain genres of gospel tracts. Many of them are what you would call general gospel tracts. They work in almost any setting, any circumstance, but we have some that are themed, some that speak to a specific need. I'm going to talk to you today about one of those. I'm holding in my hand a gospel track called Peace in Terminal Illness. Now that's a heavy subject. That's a difficult subject. I've had family members that have dealt with terminal illness. Our founder, Dr. Paul Levine, he, towards the end of his life and his ministry, he dealt with terminal illness. He wrote this gospel track in 1994-1995 time frame, and he passed away in 1996. We recently, and I'll spare the details for the privacy of the person who trusted Christ, but because of the difficult circumstances surrounding, but we had someone not too long ago let us know that they accepted Christ because of this gospel tract right here, Peace in Terminal Illness. This gospel tract works. Here's what it says on the inside On June 29th, 1995, a doctor said to me, you have cancer. It spread to your spine and ribs, so I know how you feel if you have terminal illness. Let me encourage you, friend. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, and you're dealing with the difficult circumstances like a terminal illness, or maybe you have a family member, a friend, an acquaintance that's dealing with this very issue, may I recommend to you, may I suggest that you order Peace in Terminal Illness from our website for free, BibleTractsInc.org. Remember, donations are appreciated, but they are most certainly not required. I'm going to ask you to find your Bible. Go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20, and we'll begin reading in verse number 24. Before we jump into the Bible, I'm going to ask you to look down at your hands. Look at your hands. You say, that seems like a non sequitur. Where are you going with this, Brother Mike? It'll tie in in just a moment. Look at your hands for a moment. Examine them. We use them every day, don't we? But we don't often pay them much attention, pay them much mind. It's not until we smash them with something like a hammer or slam them in a car door do we realize, oh, I have appendages there on the end of my arms. Look down at your hands for a moment. It's really amazing, these tools that God has given us. Remember the years of work that have been done by your hands? There are very few jobs, few and far between, that don't require the use of hands. Uh, Of course, 
those that work with their hands uh, over uh, not too far from here. There's a gentleman working on landscaping. I saw him out not too long ago working on landscaping for his home using his hands. If you sit behind a computer desk, it's likely you type on you would type on a keyboard using your hands, right? Even when we gesture, when we talk, we communicate in a way with our hands. I was talking to a dear man that translates for the deaf and hard of hearing community at his church. I was at a church in New York not long ago and talking to him, and and he was translating for me to some hard of hearing folks. It was amazing to see that they communicated so effectively, so efficiently, using just their hands. Some, and I pray this is not the case for my listeners today, but some may through disease or some sort of circumstance of life, some hardship, you may have lost the use of your hands. I know some folks dealing with Parkinson's and others deal with things of that nature. I'm very sorry, very sorry to hear that. But it is amazing, though, the creation that God has given us and the use of our hands. We turn to the book of John, chapter number 20. Find your place there, if you would. John 20, verse number 24. But Thomas... One of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples, therefore, said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe, except I shall see in his hands. Now, before we get on to Thomas too much, he's already got this moniker, got this nickname, Doubting Thomas, and it stuck with him for about 2,000 years or so, and I feel sorry for him sometimes, but before we get down on Thomas too much, look at that phrase, except I shall see in his hands. That is the thought today, in his hands. What is in his hands? What is in the hand of the Lord? Would you take a moment and ask God to speak to you today? I believe what we're going to discuss about God's hands could be an encouragement, could be a help. Maybe you're dealing with a very difficult circumstance like that, which I referred to earlier. Maybe you're dealing with a family member or personally, you're dealing with something like terminal illness. If so, I'm very sorry to hear that. I, I'm, I'm distraught for you. If there's anything we can do, or if we can pray for you or with you about that circumstance, we'd love to. At the conclusion of the program today, the announcer will come on with all sorts of ways that you can communicate with us. And I would love for you to do that. But can I tell you, God's got it all in his hands. That's what we are going to discuss today. I looked at the email that I've used for my professional correspondence. And not too long ago, you know how email these days kind of tells the tale of your life if you go back far enough. I I went all the way back to when I first started applying for jobs out of high school. I, I don't think I had an email address, and this tells you how ancient I am, until I was 16, 17, 18 years old. Probably kids come out of the womb with email addresses now, but I didn't have one until my later teenage years. And I saw my conversations in email. <clears throat> I went way back. Way back. Oh, this was, this was good 12, 13, 14 years ago, right? I saw some of the conversations with bosses that I had had, employers, some of the resumes that I sent out that never got answered. And the thought occurred to me as I look at my life now, the beautiful wife that I have, Miss Rebecca, my two amazing daughters, Emmy and Lucy. Uh, uh, Let's see, June 21st, Emmy turns five years old. It's amazing to see this young lady about to go to school this coming fall and to see what God has done in the fact that everything in my life has happened according to his plan, and it's all been in his hands. He's been leading every step of the way. So what is in God's hands? Well, what is in God's hands? We begin with this, each person under the sound of my voice, if, and this is a big I, F, a big if, if you are saved. You are in his hands. You know, if we trust God down here as much as we trust him to take us up there, meaning to heaven, if we trusted him for the temporal, for the earthly, as much as we trust him for eternity, we would be so much better off. 
Hebrews 13 verse 5 says this, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. We all know the verse, but it's hard to live, isn't it? John 10, 29 says, My father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. It's amazing to know that we are in his hand. Aren't you glad to know that today? Each person that knows Christ as Savior, you are in his hand hand. We're going to continue this discussion about what is in God's hand as we continue this week of broadcast. I'd like you to think back on your life. I'd like you to think about those difficult, those sticky moments, those moments when you weren't sure who was in control, who was driving this ship. Can I tell you, you've always been in God's hands if you trust him. If you don't trust him today, if you don't know him as your savior, I'd love to speak to you about that. The announcer will come on in just a moment, tell you all about how you can uh, how you can contact us. We'd love to help you with that important discussion about assurance of your salvation. As we close our conversation today, I want to thank you for taking the time to be with us here on the Bible Tract Echoes Radio Broadcast. Let me encourage you, if I may, to consider joining us October 1st, 2022. Let me encourage you. Let me invite you. Let me personally extend an invitation to you to join us October 1st, 2022. That's a Saturday. And we're going to have a great time at the grand opening of our brand new building for Bible Tracks Incorporated in Odell, Illinois. It's going to be a great time. Free food, fun, fellowship. You get, get to make some new friends and acquaintances. The whole BTI staff and team will be there. Some of our children for our BTI staff will be there as well. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do during that special time from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. October 1st, Saturday, 2022. Please consider being with us that day. I'm going to personally invite you. If you have more inf- need more information, the announcer will come on in just a moment, give you all sorts of ways that you can contact us. Thank you so much for listening. I pray that you'll join us tomorrow. I'll be right here on the porch in my parents' backyard. I'll be speaking to you again. Thank you so much for the opportunity. God bless. I pray that you have a great day for his glory.